Okay, the next study question we're going to look at involves the emission line spectrum from a glowing gas being invested with, investigated with a diffraction grating that has 1,000 lines per millimeter. And the question tells us that when this light comes from the glowing gas, so let's imagine that we isolate some of the light from our glowing gas, maybe the glowing gas is inside a tube. and it's glowing, and maybe we somehow isolate some of that light by making a slit in a piece of cardboard or something so that some of that light can come out in a straight line and uh, come towards our diffraction grating. So here's the diffraction grating, I'm just going to draw it schematically as a row of dots. 1,000 lines per millimeter means that for every millimeter along this grating there are 1,000 little tiny lines and spaces between those lines and the light will spread out and undergo diffraction and produce spots on a screen in the background. So here's our screen. So there'll be a central maximum where the light is undeflected and just goes straight through. And in our question it tells us that three different colored spots appear on the screen and they are uh, corresponding to angles of about 26 degrees, actually it says 25.7 in my notes, so that's going to be the first spot. D to 1, there's a second spot with an angle at about uh, 29 degrees, so I guess this is uh, D to 2, and there's a third spot at about 41 degrees, much larger. I'll draw it much larger. And that then is theta 3. And let's just write out these angles. So theta 1 equals 25.7 degrees. Theta 2 is 29 degrees. And theta 3 equals 41 degrees. So we're going to use our diffraction equation to figure out for each of these angles, what the wavelength of light was that led to that diffraction. So I'll just label here, this is the grating. So sine theta equals m lambda over d, where d is the spacing. Let's label these again. Now if you're wondering how do we use the order in this case, Well, I've drawn this not particularly to scale, as you can see, but we're going to decide that all of these belong to the first order. So, this is the short wave. This must be the shortest wavelength, this must be a middle wavelength, and this must be a long wavelength. So this corresponds to kind of a piece of a, of a rainbow or a spectrum, and this is all the first order. For all we know, there might be a second order way over here, and of course there'll be another first order over here on this side. We're just looking at the first order on one side for the grating. So let's calculate each of those ones. So we're going to rearrange our equation since lambda is the thing we're trying to find. Right, that's the question. What are these wavelengths? What is the gas? So one of the primary uses of spectroscopy is to identify unknown chemicals, unknown materials. So we're going to rearrange our equation so if sine theta equals m lambda over d, and we're deciding that m equals 1, that's what first order means. Well, we can just eliminate that because it's 1 at this point. So we've got sine theta equals lambda over d. So we want to rearrange for lambda, so it's just leaving lambda where it is. Equals d sine theta. Let's put it this way around so that we're fairly happy with dealing with it. Now we can just go about our business. So lambda 1 equals the sine of theta 1, which is 25.7 degrees. Now make sure you put your degrees in into your calculator or computer as degrees, because your computer might think they're radians, in which case you'll have to divide by 57.3. Now what is d? If there are 1,000 lines for every millimeter, well, let's look at this ruler. A ruler has 10 lines every centimeter, one line every millimeter. So if there's one line per millimeter, the distance between each line on the ruler 
is one millimeter. If there are a thousand lines per millimeter, it means the distance between each line is one thousandth of a millimeter. A millimeter is a thousandth of a meter, so a thousandth of a thousandth is a millionth. So therefore, d equals 10 to the minus 6. There's a thousand lines per millimeter, so each line is spaced apart by one thousandth of a meter, of a millimeter, sorry, and since a millimeter is already a thousandth of a meter, we have a thousandth of a thousandth, which is a millionth. I can't think of any real way to write it out any simpler than that, times 10 to the minus 6. So, if you put sine of 25.7 into your calculator, you will get that it is uh, 4.34 times 10 to the minus 6 and our lambda comes out as 434 nanometers. I'm sorry, it's 0.434 times 10 to the minus 6. Now if we multiply by 10 to the minus 6, this is what we end up getting, right? Because the nanometer is a 10 to the minus 9. Okay, lambda 2 equals the sine of 29 degrees times 10 to the minus 6. And this one is going to give us 486 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which equals 486 nanometers. And then finally, lambda 3 the sine of 41 degrees times 10 to the minus 6 and that gives us 656 nanometers. So the question now becomes what is this gas? We've got lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. So those are our three wavelengths and so this gas it turns out is hydrogen. And the reason why we know it's hydrogen is because the Bohr model of the atom, which is going to be one of the future questions in this section, which you can go and look at in the lecture notes. So that will be something to go and look at next. The Bohr model of the atom. How does spectroscopy lead us to understand what is the structure of the, the atom? So we'll leave that for our future session and end it there.